Hey folks, today let's get dirty. Let's talk about trailer axles. You know, we back these boats into the water all the time. And uh, one of the things I've heard a lot of anglers talking about is having to do maintenance on the side of the road, having to change out their tires, having to change out their bearings. Uh, it happens. So this is the right time of year. It's winter time right now, it's January. So let's go ahead and do some maintenance on our axles so they're ready to go in the springtime. Uh, I do have a long trip coming up where I'm gonna be going about 500 miles, 1,000 miles round trip. So I wanna make sure all my, all my bearings are in good shape and do an inspection. So stay tuned, it should be informative and we'll get right to it. First off, I like these flip lug nut. It's from Harbor Freight. Because uh, you only need to bring just, just one out. And it's got all four sizes of most of the uh, lug nuts for doing any kind of wheel job so you don't have to drag out your whole socket set. They're real handy. The other thing is having a spare some spare hub assembly with you when you're traveling. Uh, they're real easy to change out. I'm going to show you how to do that. And uh, you should always have one with you. All right, first off, let's go ahead and lift it up. All right, let's go ahead and put a safety jack under it. I generally don't like relying on the floor jack. Um, it's because if something happens and I gotta leave it overnight, the floor jack will bleed off. Where's some air plugs? Alright, now this this grease cup here, it, these can be pretty hard to get off. Okay guys, so most of the time you can just take your hammer and simply tap on this and roll it around and get that to come out. But that's not always the case. You can see there's a little ridge right here. Sometimes you need to take like a metal chisel and start back behind there and just tap that in there and then roll it and then tap it in and kind of get that gap to start. And then once you get it broke loose and started, then you can go ahead and just Tap around on it. Hey, there we go. Now that grease is kind of milky. The first time I added grease to this, man, I got water out. That was about a year ago, so be careful of that. It's real wet. You definitely want to pull the hub assembly off. Okay, for grease, when I'm working around it, I like to wear these nitro gloves. Keeps things a little cleaner. All right, now you gotta take the cotter pin out. I normally use a pair of needle nose pliers. And now you can remove the nut. You can use some slip joint pliers or channel locks as they're called. And they're not very tight. You actually don't want them real tight. Okay. 
and there's a washer behind there that comes out with the nut. Then that hub assembly just slips off, just like that. Watch out, there is a bearing that comes out the front. The back bearing has a seal, so that back bearing will stay inside. So we're going to do a little inspection of the bearing. Make sure it looks like it's rolling properly. And the grease doesn't look too bad. Now, if we saw any signs of corrosion, we would go ahead and pop that seal out of the back and replace all the bearings. Now, if you're just doing just a quick check, just take and roll it. Make sure it's rolling freely and make sure there's not a lot of play. Back and forth, up and down, side to side. If you can move it this way or this way, that's a good indication you have a bearing out. Okay guys, this is kind of what it looks like up close and personal. You got your grease zerk right there and it pumps the grease through the shaft and it comes out back here. And then of course pushes forward because of the seal feeling the cavity. You can see that back seal there that's holding the bearing in the back side then on the front side sorry about that you just have the race and then the bearing which goes in like that so really all it's holding that whole assembly on is the nut and the cotter pin the way it goes through the nut so needless to say, replace your cotter pin every time you pull it off. The kits come with a new cotter pin. All right, so we got our inspection done. Let's go ahead and put it all back together. Slide the hub assembly on. nut is actually made to go on so it catches a little bit so what I do I tighten that nut down pretty tight at first I get those bearings good and seated and you can see it'll just it just won't hardly even turn then I back it off a little Say a quarter to a half a turn. Make sure that it turns freely. Then I back it off just a little bit. If there's a just a little bit of slop, it's okay. You know, we're talking less than a sixteenth of an inch. Then I find my slot. Put my new cotter pin in. Okay, and then just bend that over. Now you're going to have a little rubber insert in there. You just pop that out. Don't damage the rubber. And you're going to use a rubber mallet and tap this back in. Alright, so after you get everything put back together, you're going to put this cap back on. Uh, that can be rather difficult sometimes too. And then you'll get it started on there. 
and you'll start tapping and it won't go. <clears throat> Bearing buddies are notorious for being very hard to get on there. Uh, I have mixed emotions about bearing buddies. Um, so I, I installed them on a few uh, trailers that didn't have the grease zerks where I could grease them regularly. But other than that, I just use these type. So if you're having trouble getting it started, simply take a block of wood, put it on there, and then tap pretty forcefully uh, to get that started. And then continue on with the block of wood. Otherwise, what you'll end up, you'll end up dimpling all over the front of this. That's another reason for using a rubber mallet. If you're using a regular hammer, even with one that goes on pretty easy, go ahead and use a block of wood. That way you don't get all those dimples. Okay? All right, now let's go ahead and fill it with grease. So we should have a bunch of new grease in there now. And especially if you, uh, if while you're pumping you get some grease that looks like it might be a little thin. Because we do back these trailers in the water all the time. Uh, they are subject to water. So wipe off the excess. And put the rubber insert back in. You'll need to check your particular trailer for the torque pounds to torque the lug nuts down to because they are different depending on the axle and the rating. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. Let's get out on the water and have a great day.